everyone, I'm Coda Blue, and I'm here with WRAD TV, and we're here at the Javits Center for New York Comic Con. We're here at the Winx Club booth. Let's go check it out. Hi guys, so I'm here with Valeria from Rainbow. And Margarita from Rainbow. Wonderful. So can you guys tell us about the booth uh, this evening? Yeah, we are super excited to be in the States again after all these years and it's our first time in Comic-Con and uh, we are doing great, things are going great and we are super happy to yes. be here. We have so many products, new products that just, you know, exclusive for this market. We have books and totes and shirts and of course we have also this super cool photo op for all the nostalgic fans that want, you know, to bring with, with them some Something, you know, something to remember the series that made their childhood. Yeah. Well, awesome. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the reboot and how, like, you're going to balance, uh, how do you guys think it's going to balance out, like, nostalgia and bringing something new to the uh, Wings Club, like, universe? That's exactly the point because our aim is. Um, is uh, trying to make all fans and new fans really happy. Uh, in fact, we are starting all over again from uh, series one, from the beginning of Wing Story, but with a brand new look, uh, with a brand new CGI production. And it will be ready at the beginning of 2025. 20, yes. Awesome. It will have something for everybody, you know, all the new fans. Awesome, thank you. Um, where can we guys, uh, where can everybody uh, find your Instagram? Or so, social media? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are on Instagram with Wings Club, uh, you know, uh, at. at Wings Club. <laughs> so let's check there. We are on TikTok as well, but it's a brand new profile. So, you know, just make sure to follow there as well. Awesome, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Awesome, you heard it here first. Bye -bye. <laughs> Hi, my my name is Carla Sarah. I'm with WRAD TV, and we're here with. My name is Alex. And what are you dressed as today? I am dressed up as Stealth Suit Deku from the My Hero Academia movie World Heroes Mission. Cool. Is that your favorite movie? No, I don't really have a favorite movie, but I do enjoy this version of Midoriya's uh, suit, so I chose this one. Do you like his villain-esque a little bit more than his little friendly-esque? I'm not gonna lie, that was an interesting twist on Midoriya's character, him just becoming a anti-hero, I guess you could say, and just going rogue. And him going rogue was just very interesting because it was kind of a little bit of a clash against his original, well, how he was before because before he would have been like all right i'll listen to all might because he's my idol or whatever and so he's just like i have to go on my own i can't be around all might i can't be around anybody because i'm on uh i'm being hunted by all for one and so it, it, it was just a very nice twist you know the city's in uh peril everything's destroyed and he's just out there go going against All Might's wishes, well, not his wishes, but yeah, kind of his wishes for him to not just go out it alone and everything, and also just having to fight his own classmates. So is Deku your favorite character? I don't really have a favorite character in My Hero. I've thought about it for a while and just came to the conclusion I don't have one. Although I do act similar to Midoriya quite a bit, so... I just chose Midoriya. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here at Comic-Con, and we are checking out the Stranger Comics booth today. And today I am here with... Hey guys, I'm Sebastian Jones. What's up, everybody? All right, today Sebastian has well, he has kindly shown me some of his artwork and some of his written work as well. So, do you mind telling us some of the written work? Absolutely. So this is a, the fantasy world of Asunder I spent about 30 years creating. And uh, 30 years. Frightening. Um, and we're mostly known for this book. Right here. I grabbed three of them at the same time. Look at that. 
Niobe, she is life. Um, the reason why this is uh, fairly well known is because this is the first nationally distributed comic book with a black female author, artist, and hero in the history of entertainment. When I had the honor of writing with Amanda Stenberg, who played Rue in The Hunger Games, and Ashley A. Woods doing the art. And Viola Davis did the four in the hardcover, which is crazy. The new comic is written by Viola's daughter and from the woman king, Tusa Mbedu. So anyway, apart from all that hollywood -y stuff, this is a very culturally inclusive fantasy world, not because it's a hashtag trending, because it's my life's work. So, is there anywhere that we could find these? Online or any, by chance? Yeah, if you, if you go to sleep at night and you dream, you will find these comics in your dreams. When you're not dreaming and you awaken, you go to strangercomics.com or at Stranger Comics on all social medias, all the webs, people have got the tattoos, get a tattoo, Stranger Comics, become a part of the Stranger family and find us. Well guys, you heard it here first from the author himself. Go to strangercomics.com and you shall see. You shall see. Thanks everybody, peace. My name is Carla. I'm with WRAD TV, and here we're here with Starshly. Oh, such you. a pretty name. <laughs> Thank you. Where you dressed us today? Claudine Wolf from Monster High. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm very excited because I love Monster High. <laughs> And you like stopped me and it was like the cutest thing in the world. We just screamed for like 10 minutes. It was great. Is Claudine your favorite character? Yes, absolutely. Why wouldn't it be? Like purr, purr. But what about her do you like? I just love her sense of style. I love her like she gives like, she takes nothing from nobody. She just is like, it is what it is. Like don't even try to play with me. And I'm a Sagittarius, so I don't know if that says anything about me, but I just feel like I resonate with Claudine the most out of all of them so yeah how many um dolls do you own uh, if I were to do the laundry list in my head I'm gonna say about 11 of them my recent purchase was the uh, the Halloween Yay. collection that they did it's fabulous uh, the one that they sold at San Diego Comic-Con was Draculaura hanging upside down and I was like give it to me <laughs> I'll take it right now right now so that was a really cool one I, I, if I started collecting dolls I don't think I would stop that's not a poor that's a very poor financial decision for me that's it ends with Monster High who knows who's next honestly so did you make your whole cow outfit or did you order it I made it entirely from yes, scratch <laughs> from scratch um, the corset the corset took like maybe maybe like a month or so to figure it all out I just bought a sewing machine like three months ago so I'm figuring it all out as I go the, the fur the Furby pop in. The jacket is from Shein, and I destroyed it from there. Um, you know, uh, the skirt, not in love with it, but hey, I'm making it work. The belt, handcrafted, made by me. The boots, let's talk that about the fun. boots. The boots be booting. Look at me stomping around. It just, it's so great. And then the ears I made myself. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna redo them, but I like them all the same. So yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. And. You, my name was Carla. And this was Claudine as. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> as Starshly. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Hi, my name is Adrian, and we're with Gallery Panda. Awesome, so tell us about our booth. Yeah, so uh, basically we are an art collective of a bunch of artists that all band of, we've kind of partnered with to bring uh, just amazing artwork from all over the world to Comic-Cons like New York. Uh, we basically partner with a bunch of artists, so every time somebody purchases, they're directly supporting an independent artist, which is great, right? Uh, but we just try to bring the art to life in the coolest way possible. Awesome, that sounds dope. Um, so do you have like any of your like favorite pieces of artwork? Oh man, that's like the hardest question, yeah, because like everything is always my favorite, right? Um, I would say like we have one, um, shoot, I don't even see it. Oh, you know what, I do have it. It is, oh, you know what? Oh, 
Oh, wow. Look at that. That's one of my favorites. I have it in my room, but I have like a four foot version of it. So it's huge. And uh, it's, uh, you know, this cat making sushi is just so cute. It is very cute. I want it. How much are you selling? <laughs> so, yeah, it just depends, right? So we do deals. Uh, normally online, they're 99, but we charge one for 80, two for 70 each or three for 60 each here at New York Comic Con. So we got some deals. Uh, but you can always buy them later online as well. Sometimes we do little promos, things like that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, one question. How are we able to like hang them up or like store them? What's like the best way to like keep them healthy and like looking fresh? So uh, that's the cool thing about what we sell here. So I'm going to give you a little demo. Okay, watch this. Whoa. So they're very durable. So I can, I can do this. I can, I can do this. They're very strong. Or if I'm really <laughs> angry one day, I could even... Ah, I can even do that. It's just that strong. Oh my gosh. Wow. So they will always be fresh. <laughs> they will always be good. Noted. <laughs> but, right. But to hang it, we just use command strips. So we just ah, stick, okay. stick it right. It's super easy. Or here's where we get fancy. We can do these light boxes here. So we can actually backlight the artwork as well. So we can stick in some art, pop it in. And then from there, it just looks that much better with the backlighting. Oh my gosh, that was fabulous. <laughs> Incredible, wonderful. Y'all gotta go check them out. Where can we find you guys on Instagram or social media? Yes, yes, so it's gonna be Gallery Panda Official on Instagram, and then the website's gallerypanda.com. Awesome, thank you so much. Y'all go check them out. <laughs>Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sonny, and today we are back here at New York City Comic Con. And today I am here with... My name is David Edmondson. I am the marketing director for Bandai Namco Toys and Collectibles. And as you can tell, I've been talking a lot this weekend. Yes. Yes. So we are here back at Bandai Namco. Can you tell us something about Bandai Namco? What's your role with the booth here? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm the marketing director. So one of my teams is the event team, which is responsible for setting up these massive booths, working with the brand team to bring the experience to life. But I also work with the content team, which is responsible for running all the social channels and creating all of the video content that you'll see on our social channels and on our website. Ah, very nice. I have a rad job. That is that is very nice. How do you guys connect with the fans and everybody else that enjoys your company and everything that goes along with it? Yeah, absolutely. So what we're trying to do is we work with the licensors and the IP IDP, IPs. So you'll see like we have a Dragon Ball booth and a Naruto booth. So instead of just bringing a bunch of Dragon Ball and Naruto stuff and trying to sell you a bunch of stuff. We want to make a love letter to Dragon Ball fans. So you'll see in the Dragon Ball booth that there's nothing for sale in the Dragon Ball booth. There's a bunch of photo ops. You know, we have these giant inflatable orange Piccolo and Cell Maxes. We have statues for Goku and Gohan. You can go there and you can play the card game free of charge. You can meet a new friend. If you don't know how to play, someone's there to teach you how to play the game. We have the video game demos there. You can go play the video game. You can build a free model kit. There's photo ops where you can be your own spirit bomb. We really want to give you the experience to let you know that like we are also anime fans we love dragon ball we love naruto you know we love these franchises as well and if you love them and you want to buy something yeah the bandai booth is across the way you can pick up your super saiyan 3 goku figure art zero over there but we also want you to know that at the convention that we're fan first company and we want to show you that we want to bring an experience for you not just try to sell you toys Hi. Well, you guys heard it here first. Is there any way the fans can connect with you through social media? Yeah, absolutely. We have a ton of social media. Uh, the best one is going to be follow us at Bandai Collect. Uh, that's going to be our main social channels. Uh, or if you're on TikTok, if you're a cool young kid like I am, you know, want to dance and stuff, uh, it's at Bandai Official. Uh, that's the best way to keep up with us across all the social platforms. Gotcha, gotcha. So is there anything else we can expect from you guys in the coming of years? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're going to continue to go bigger and better. We have 10 booths at this new, this New York Comic Con. Last year we had eight, and you know, maybe next year we'll have even more. But we're going to continue to push the envelope and continue to get bigger. And we'd like to hear from our fans. If there's something you liked about Comic Con or didn't like about Comic Con, something different you want us to bring, you know, we'd love to hear from fans because fan feedback is really what we love to hear about. Gotcha. Well, you heard it here from me first. I'm Sonny Madrum, and I'll see you guys later. Take care. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Aviles and I'm here with WRAD TV today to talk about some great projects with Disney. If you guys would like to introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Lucy Havens and I'm a co-creator of Disney's KIF. Hi, I'm Nick Small. I'm also a co-creator of Disney's KIF. <laughs> Alright, awesome. So do you guys want to talk to us about what KIF is all about? 
Sure. Kif is about um, a very intense and very optimistic squirrel who um, has a very rich inner world and shares it with us in every episode. She, um, you know, she wants the best for everyone around her. She's got a best buddy who's a bunny and the two of them, I think they love each other more than anyone could in the world. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they go on adventures sometimes that are, uh, you know, take them to their backyard only. And sometimes the adventures take them, you know, to the top of the mountain. So they, they have a good time, be it in their backyard or, you know, out in the wilderness. Yeah, it's actually a very low concept show. You know, it's not, we, it's hard to pick a low concept show but um, because you're like well she's you know around uh, with her buddies and she lives at home and goes to school like that's pretty much it um, but uh, the richness of it is in the characters and in their individuality and um, yeah that's and she's, a fun, she's a fun she's a fun character to write and create yeah oh, that's awesome so can you guys walk us through your creative process I mean, we work very hard and we, <laughs> we uh, I mean, any given week just sees us spending uh, a, a few hours a day in the writer's room, a few hours reviewing animatics and really making sure that our characters are coming across and that the tone is right and that our jokes are landing and that the world is full of fun characters and makes you want to go there. And we love hanging out in table town, so. Yeah. And, and we we're, you know, we're in the records as well. We're both, um, you know, voicing characters on the show, uh, writing the songs as well. So we got our hands pretty full, but it's, <laughs> but we wouldn't have it any other way because we care so deeply about this, <laughs> about the squirrel and and all of the the weirdos that live in Table Town. Yeah. So you know, we find that ideas can come from ev anywhere, and they do. They come from a visit to the grocery store. They come from a walk down the road when you're kicking a rock and you're like okay cool everyone's kicked a rock on their way back from school like we can have a story of them you know doing that and this the rock like a great episode the rock goes off off path and takes them on an adventure you know and that's that's our creative process it's just being open to the stories that are happening around us everywhere every day that's awesome we love to hear stories like that and so can you guys give us some advice about like breaking into the industry or just how you guys really got your foot started i mean our journey everybody's journey is different and if there was one way we'd write a book called the way and then everyone would know how but nick and i grew up in cape town in south africa where we did not have access to executives and ways to pitch and it was it took us a long time to figure it out um eventually i i'm a writer by the way i'm not an artist nick is an artist and a musician and um but i had found an agent um, first in the UK and then in the States and I I mean everyone will do this in a different way but I basically had applied for like government funding to go to a um, kids screen which is a, a conference in Miami and then tacked on a trip to LA and slept on my best friend's brother's best friend's couch and uh, my manager had like hooked us up some some meetings for us and uh, we pitched it to Disney that way and um, and they optioned it but it was a long journey of like pitching within Disney yeah. and, and um, all remotely by the way yeah so you know growing up in, in South Africa there wasn't you know a Disney building or a you know a Cartoon Network building or, or a Comic-Con or a Comic-Con <laughs> exactly um, so you, we would see shows that we would love growing up and would watch cartoons but you know we didn't know that it, you could actually make them um, but one thing that I would say is is um, is very much the uh, very when the time comes having created your own stuff as much as possible, yeah. having worked on your own um, content, your own characters, stories, whatever you're into, the more you do it, every time you do it, you learn from that experience and you do it again. If you do that yourself in your own capacity, um, you know when the time comes, you'll you know you'll be well practiced, and uh, that was our process. Um, broadcasters are often looking for someone with an original voice and the only way you find yours is by making and making and making and making mistakes finding and making out what you, more. Yeah, finding out yeah. what you like and what you don't like and what you are good at and you know and what you enjoy what you enjoy making because chances are if you enjoy making it it's going to be enjoyable to watch um, and that only comes from 
exploring that, you know. Absolutely, that's some great advice. Can you tell us right before we let you go, what, when KIF's gonna come out, where we can watch it and you know, any remaining thoughts you guys have? Sure, right. Kif, Kif is out on um, Disney Channel and Disney Plus. We're kind of about halfway through season one. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure what else. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can watch it. <laughs> yeah, you can find uh, a couple of uh, you know clips and music videos from the shows on, on YouTube on the Disney Channel yeah, YouTube. Yeah. Um, uh, otherwise, yeah, you know, it's new episodes are coming out uh, every week on Disney Channel. Go check them out. Uh, Kiff and Barry would love to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and this was WRED TV. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Aviles and I'm here with WRED TV and we're here with Dan Pappenmeyer and Jeff Swanby Marsh, the creators of Phineas and Ferb. Guys, how are you doing today? Excellent. So far so good, but it's early. You know. <laughs> yeah. It is an early day. Yeah, there's plenty of time for the day to go straight. <laughs> it all goes south camp. real quick. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so our first question for you guys today is what is your creative process? Um, we. <laughs> I, I think we, we it mostly it's always been we get in a room and try and, to make each other laugh and try that's, and, that's and basically. You basically say silly stuff until you find the one that's funny enough that you write it down and draw pictures of it yeah. and you try not to question things well, too much what we've tried to tell our writers is don't don't not pitch something because you think it's too stupid for us because that's usually the stuff that goes in. Some of our best ideas when we started out very early on was somebody saying something really, really unusably stupid. <laughs> and the other person going, no, no, wait a minute. That. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a minute. We could we could make that work. <laughs> we, we were on, uh, writing on a show called Rocco's Modern Life. And uh, and I forget, we, we were coming up we on a chase scene. And, and me, we don't remember who said what, but one of us said, oh, it would be really funny if Ro Rocco was riding the dead horse. The, 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 we, there was a taxidermed ho horse that we had established earlier in the episode. Just because we were you stuck. Know, like, like, you know, just like saying that as a joke, like there, we couldn't possibly do that. And the other one was like, no, wait, wait, we could put it on casters and he could rope the thing and then he would be like, you know, and uh, and you know, like we wouldn't have done that if there hadn't been two, two of us in the room. And I think so. there was somewhere around that moment where Dan and I said, we really need to create a show so we can work together more. Yeah. So we created Phineas and Ferb and then didn't work together for 13 years. Yeah. That's basically it's brilliant. It. what we said was like, let's create a show together and then we'll always be able to work together. We never have to have to work apart. And uh, because we felt like we would just sell a show like that. And uh, yeah. and then, you know, 13 years later, he wasn't even in the same country anymore. He was he was living in in, in England and, uh, and I was in, in L.A. when we sold it. We underestimated the industry's ability to grasp our genius. Yes. <laughs> That's what it was. That's oh, funny. man. So going on that thread, like, do you have any advice for artists trying to start their own career and like starting their own shows? Uh, yeah, I mean, just just keep pushing for the idea that you like, because yeah. that was how it was for us is like, like we liked Phineas and Ferb so much because I felt like this is the show I want to see. So I feel like other people will, will want to see it. So whenever anybody would ask me to pitch something, I would just dust that off and bring it in and, 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 and pitch it. And and uh, and I think that's how you get uh, success is you do something that you would want to consume. So I, I, I've talked to a bunch of guys who've said, oh, I had this idea and I pitched it everywhere and it didn't you know, take off. And I two questions. One, how long ago was it you pitched that? Mm -hmm. And if it's longer than a year, go pitch it again, because everybody you pitched to is probably gone or yes. <laughs> the network that you pitched it to has changed what it is they're looking for. Disney said no to Phineas and Ferb when I first pitched it to them. They said, no, we're, we're not looking for characters uh, for boy characters. We're only looking for girl characters right now. And then like a year and a half later, they called up and said, oh, we want to option Phineas and Ferb because we because now they're looking for a boy show. Wow, that's really insane. So, yeah, yeah, worked out really well. So as we begin to wrap up, we just want to ask you real quick, what are your best memories of working on Phineas and Ferb? I, Go ahead. I think it, it was the the uh, the Phineas and Ferb dance party that was it. Uh, we just we were just talking yeah. about this with, uh, with some other people, it's like like to, to to have our characters, the big walk arounds uh, there in the parks at all was really cool. But to have them come out and sing all these songs that we wrote in an office and yeah. in the Frank G. Wells building, you know, <laughs> the, on, on acoustic guitars. Had to have them come out and that be part of the magic at Disneyland was probably the coolest thing. Yeah. 
process wise i mean you're talking about creative process for me the the songwriting sessions that we had yeah. were the best friday night you'd get <laughs> done you knew you had to write a song for this episode and we would sit around with you know a bunch of guitars and a keyboard and pads of paper and write any kind of song we wanted in any kind of style and that was just blindingly blazingly fun to do that's so awesome thank you guys so much for your time and coming out to talk to us you guys yes, thanks, can w watch the rest later and we'll see you guys later bye Ciao. <laughs> good afternoon everybody we are back here at comic-con today and today i am here with Ryan Pelagos, AKA Agent M, Vice President and Creative Executive for Marvel Digital Media. All right, we got someone from Marvel here today. So what can you tell us about the booth that we're here at today? Yeah, so at the Marvel booth, we have a, a ton of really cool stuff, experiences. We have some places where people can check out um, like eyeglasses from Warby Parker that are inspired by Marvel Spider-Man 2. We have uh, like a watch inspired by Marvel Studios Loki season two. We've got uh, Spider-Man 2, um, uh, photo exhibits and places where you can do photo stuff with uh, Marvel Studios, the Marvels. We've got stuff happening on stage where myself and some others, we host conversations, uh, interviews, signings, uh, fun and games, interactive elements. So just a whole ton of really cool stuff here. Right. Is this your only booth that you have here today or is there more that we could find? Uh, we also, Marvel also has a store here where we're selling all kinds of really cool merch and, and things like that. But uh, it's the, I think we have the biggest booth or one of the biggest booths at New York Comic Con. It's plenty. We've got a lot. Will you guys be expanding more in the coming of years by any chance? I think we're good. I think we're, we're, we're good with what we have. I, as I said, our, our footprint is, is pretty significant. So any more, we'd have to bring in tons more people. And that's, that's a lot. Right. Now, where can we find you guys at on social media? Sure, Marvel, you can find at Marvel everywhere. We are literally on everything. Years ago, I created all of our social channels. And they're still running. Aha! Alrighty. Well, you guys heard it here first. My name is Sonny, and we are out. Hey guys, it's Coda, and I'm back again for day two of Comic Con. So I'm here with. Jan Crary with Vault Comics. Awesome! So can you tell us about the booth? What's going on? We are a creator-owned publisher of science fiction, fantasy, and horror graphic novels and comics. We got a great spot here, right by the front, 3301, nice little 20 by 20 island. And we're just out here slinging books, getting people to read exciting new graphic novels, either horror, fantasy, or sci-fi. That's our bread and butter. And we're having a great show. Oh, wow. I'm a big fan of horror, personally, myself. So, like, what is, like, your best or your personal favorite horror book that you have here today? I'm going to grab it. It's called The Autumnal. Awesome. Great. The Autumnal right here was written by Daniel Krause, who's the co-writer with Guillermo del Toro of The Shape of Water and Troll Hunters. Oh, wow. He's also a celebrated novelist. This was his nice. first comic ever. Chris Sheehan did the art. It's a small New England town, creeping dread sort of horror story. There's a legend about a witch that might not be a legend after all. Oh. Very, very atmospheric and has an ending that just shakes you to your core and sticks with me to this day. Oh, wow, that sounds great. Sounds right up my alley. Uh, so where can we guys find you on uh, social media or uh, where can we purchase the books? Absolutely, uh, vaultcomics.com or wherever books are sold, especially your local comic book shop, but anywhere that you buy books, you can find Vault Comics. And this is for you. Oh, nice, let's go. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, you heard it here first. Vault Comics, y'all better go check it out. Hey guys, it's Coda and I'm here with Andy from MetaZoo. Awesome. We're at the Sanrio Kurumi booth right now, and we're here to talk about all the culture and the fun stuff that comes along with it. Here we go. So can you tell me uh, anything about your uh, booth and why you're here and what your goal is today? Sure, so we're here to introduce our collaboration, MetaZoo X Sanrio and Kuromi. This year we're introducing all of our characters to the Sanrio universe and having them play with their friends, Kuromi, My Melody, and Hello Kitty. This booth is an entire ex expansion of what our set release looks like. It features many of our characters, our products, and plushes featured within our set. Ooh, nice. So can you tell me, like, who created this booth? Because I personally think it is fire. It's so cute. Like, who came up with, like, the design? How did you guys do it? 
It's awesome. Well, thank you so much, first of all. So the set construction is all my design. I built the idea of the carnival. I built the idea of the cryptids coming to meet the Sanrio and Kuromi characters. I built the uh, plushes, the products, all of that fun stuff with the help of my fantastic art team. Uh, they're all backstage if you guys would like to meet them and get any segments on them. Uh, yeah, that was great. Thank you. So can you tell me about some of the products that you have here? What are you guys selling today? Yeah. So the big exclusive we have for Comic-Con is this box right here. As you can see, we have five different mystery plushes in these boxes. They each come in. So cute. They each come encapsulated with a specific trading card that matches the plush. Uh, if you want to open one, I'd love to give you one. Absolutely. I would love to. That sounds great. I think you got some stickers here. Oh, OK. All righty. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Those make it tough, huh? Oh, well, really great packaging. <laughs> As you can tell, very sturdy. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get my nail through it. Awesome. There we go. Got one. Nice. Oh, this is like so embarrassing. I can't open a box. Oh, they're sturdy. Oh, it's really cute packaging. I'm obsessed. I'm like screaming. It's the booth. It's the whole booth. Oh my gosh. <sighs> it's the moment of truth right here. It really is. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> Halloween theme karate. Oh, it's so cute. I'm obsessed. I'm like screaming. You got a card in there too. Oh, Is that a card. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, OMG, are you kidding? Oh my gosh, this is so cute, guys. Oh, that's so cute! This is adorable. Yeah, so it's these... crazy, because like I'm obsessed with like Melody, okay. so I'm like, I feel like a little bit of a traitor right now. <laughs> oh, well, my Melody's in this set, you see her right here. Nice, yeah. awesome! She's Whoa. on the boxes on all our packaging, so anybody that picks up any of this collaborative product will have my Melody, Hello nice. Kitty, and Karomi all in the carnival. Wonderful, thank you so much, Andy, this is great. Um, if you don't mind sharing where we guys can find you guys on social media, TikTok, Instagram, all of that. Sure, so we're MetaZoo Games on every social platform you can imagine. We're, <laughs> we're MetaZoo Games on every social platform you can imagine. Nice. You can Google us, find us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere. Wonderful, you guys hear, heard it here first. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Aviles and I'm here with Kuromi and MetaZoo. And we're gonna be talking about the new Kuromi Cryptic Carnival, but here with us are two of the artists involved in the project. Can you say your name for us? Yes. Hi, I'm Afton. Hi, I'm Isaac Skyly. All right. And so can you guys tell us a little bit more about the Kuromi Carnival? Yeah. So this is our introduction to really Kuromi's, um, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, Kuromi's Carnival. Oh my God. I did, I did this literally all day yesterday, <laughs> and so I'm like, it's okay, okay. You, you, you can do it actually, because I did a bunch of stuff yesterday. All right, let me see if I got this. <laughs> yeah. So Kuromi's Carnival. So Kuromi's Cryptic Carnival is basically the convergence of both of the worlds, the Sanrio world and the Metazoo world. It's basically um, the Hello Kitty and friends converging with the Metazoo beasties that we already have in our IP. Okay, awesome. So do you guys want to talk to us about your favorite characters to draw? Yeah, so as far as Sanrio goes, I'm a big Cinemaroll fan and uh, I really love Kromi's color scheme with the black and the pink and the purple. It's just a lot of fun seeing our booth with all my favorite colors on it. Um, in terms of our beasties, I'm a big unicorn fan. Anybody in our community knows that too. So uh, we, I think we spoiled one of the cards actually yesterday on stream. It was oh a chibi unicorn. Gosh. So that is definitely my favorite. <laughs> That's awesome. What about you? I think my personal favorite, like Sanrio character, has got to be Pachaco. I just like how he's always wearing a hat, throwing a skateboard. Sometimes Kuropi. I like the derpy frog guy. And for medicine characters, I like Dragon of Oconto Falls. He's like a rainbow dragon. And I also like Mishipeshu. He's like a water panther. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Okay, and so what is one thing that you guys would love for fans to like take away from it or like just enjoy about the plushies that are coming out and the amazing cards that you guys have? Uh, so one of the really cool things about our partnership with Sanrio is kind of introducing people that might not otherwise be in the TCG space. Um, I know that the demographic usually for trading cards is really male dominated. So we've been seeing a lot of kids, a lot of women, a lot of young women that have been coming because this is a really cute, fun, really widely appealing type of style. 
So that's uh, it's it's been really cool to see everybody come by and and really anybody that's interested find something that they connect to. Yeah, absolutely. And so, do you guys have any last things, anything going on that you guys want to share with us? Uh, we have our set. So everything here today, these plushes are exclusive to the event, but we have our set, our first actual core set with Sanrio called Karomi's Cryptic Carnival releasing later this month. Um, so we just did a stream for the collector's boxes on eBay, but we'll have booster boxes, blisters, everything like that. So you'll be able to access it outside of this too. All right. Awesome. You guys heard it here first. We're here at New York Comic Con. It is Sunday and we're so excited and we're going to go and see everyone else online and see what they think. All right. Bye guys. Thank you.